Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? And welcome back to the channel. Just kind of wanted to show you something real quick before we get started. Look back here at my, uh, well, I guess we could call it the parts bench. Um, this all horses that uh, my son made me in school. Uh, remember all the parts that were sitting on top there? Everything is gone. Actually, I forgot one thing last or yesterday evening that I had to do yet when that was put on the shock. Um, I was excited about getting things done and forgot to put shock on. So I did have, like you saw last night, I do have the calipers on the driver's side, uh, caliper rotor, all new ro or caliper bracket, all new rotors, everything on the passenger and driver's side is brand new, um, less the lower control arm. The lower control arms, I didn't feel that I need to replace them. I guess I could have, you know, now that I look at things as far as the uh, bushings up in there, but uh, we're just kind of kind of roll with them and see how things go. I did press new ball joints in them as you saw uh, yesterday. Um, brakes are bled for the most part. I do need to go through and do a little bit of bleeding on them. You can see by the ground right there. What I like to do is let gravity be my friend. Um, what I will do since those were completely new and empty, what I actually like to do is make sure my reservoir is 100% full and actually you can go over full if you want to because you're, those are empty and then I just open up the bleeders and let gravity take over. It'll fill that up and since the bleeders are on top, um, it'll actually fill them completely up until you have oil coming out of them and then just tighten them up and continue on with uh, your regular bleeding. You know, you need a buddy or you, if you have one of them vacuum pumps, you can uh, use one of those. But other than that, uh, all your oil and everything is full now. Um, there may be just a little bit of air in the lines, um, but as for the most part, everything is completely taken care of. Uh, one thing that I do, I don't know if it makes a difference or not, is I do take the cap off um, and let air flow through the top. That way it doesn't create a vacuum and, and let the air, or not let the oil run all the way through. So um, that this reservoir was completely up to the full mark right there. And you can see how much it's down now. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and replace the cap. Uh, I do need to pick up some more uh brake fluid to top that off the rest of the way because i do have to have some more bleeding done but uh the goal today is i'm going to get the shock on i'm going to adjust that steering you know like i showed you last night make sure everything's good there and then we're actually going to drive this to o'reilly to return the cores on the uh the rotors and and man i keep saying rotors the calipers and caliper brackets there so uh Let's get at it and get that shock on and see if we can't get this thing back on the ground. All right, they're the same on both sides. Uh, putting the shocks on, there is a cushion top and bottom of the frame. So you'll have your you'll have a washer, a cushion, and then it'll go up for your frame right there. And then you'll have another cushion and washer and then a lock nut. On the bottom side of the lower control arms, you can see the two studs there that I have lathered with uh, anti-seize. These are actually tapered and will only go on there one way. They're pitched to the geometry of the suspension. So you wanna make sure and get that right uh, before you go tightening things up. And then they just go through the bottom. Give it just a little compression jobby there so you can get it up through the hole. Get those bottom ones tightened up, and then I'll put, uh, I do use a crescent wrench on the top right there to hold the stud, and then I'll use a ratchet wrench to tighten up that lock nut. All right, now we're ready for the dually adapter. What one of you guys suggested was in the fin of the brake right there, 
just to shove a screwdriver in there and let that go against. Now on this side here, I can't do that. I would have to put it on the bottom right there, which is fine, but there's just a little, just enough room in there that I can actually slide it right in there and get the first one started. And then I, what I did on the other side is I did one, rotated it, did another one, rotated it, or do a couple of them. I can do these three and then rotate it however I want to do it. But uh, that's actually a really good idea to take them off, the dually adapters off. I actually had a bar stuck in here going down to the ground. And one of you guys suggested to just stick a screwdriver in there and uh, great idea. So I wanted to pass that along. So right now I'm going to get these dually adapters on and get this adjusted and then get the tires on. All right, dually adapter is on. That's all tightened up. Uh, getting ready to do the uh, some steering adjustment, and I was kind of looking around and looking at things, and I thought to myself, the only thing I have not painted yet is the drive shaft. So I thought, what better time to paint it while it's still on jack stands? I can get her up in the air. While it's up in the air, I can have everything turning, and all I gotta do is steer and go like this. It's like automated, man, isn't it? any kids watching this please don't do this at home I'm a trained professional I know what the hell I'm doing at least I think I might know what the hell I'm doing so anyway I thought it was a good opportunity to get that drive shaft painted um, pretty simple pretty easy I got the uh, coat of rush reformer on it uh, we'll let that dry a little bit and we'll get a coat of uh, the semi gloss on it to match everything else and it'll be good to go so we're gonna turn that off and uh, get this steering done all right like i said don't if there's kids watching please don't tell your parents say look look what he did i can do it too um yeah that, that's you won't talk about sketchy like last night's thumbnail or yesterday's thumbnail that, that's sketchy at best so uh but it does work i mean just look at it it's just drying uh, I left it run in first gear and I wire brushed it and then left it run in first gear and then also hit it with a coat of paint. So, um, like I said, it does work. Um, and it did make that job a hell of a lot easier, but uh, please don't try that at home. So, right now, I'm going to turn my attention. I do have the steering wheel turned and it's nice and straight. And it's just got an ever so slight turn in on that side and then it's really really ever so slightly turned in on that side so what I'm gonna do is loosen up this jam nut and then I'm actually gonna make these longer by twisting this out so I don't have to go much just a little bit just to kind of straighten them up just a little bit and then uh, we'll tighten the jam nut back up and let the professionals at the alignment shop uh, take care of the rest all right, like I said, you need to loosen up the jam nut. And then you need to make this longer.
turn it just a little bit and then come over and check make sure we're getting square and then just keep going until you're happy with it and then make sure and retighten up the jam nut up there all right i'm pretty happy with that side I'll move on to the other side over there and get that side straightened up. All right, everybody, here she is. Uh, I did get her sitting on all fours, uh, move things around. Did my little sketchy paint job on the uh, drive shaft. Got some semi-gloss on it, trying to kind of go with everything else that's faded out from not having a bed on it. But uh, that'll be all right. It's fine. It is what it is. I like the rims actually they turned out pretty good I think it looks pretty good the way it sits um, I'm hoping when I get the weight of the bed on it it drops it down just a little bit um, you know like we had discussed before I, I wish I could take a leaf out of that bottom but if I do then we're gonna have issues as far as changing or not taking a leaf out. I guess I could take this leaf out this overload leaf I could have taken it out and left the spacers in there and it would have been the same it would have dropped it a little bit a half inch not much but uh looks pretty good like i said the bed weighs probably four five hundred ish pounds so i'm hoping it'll squat it down just a little bit so now we are actually gonna take it and drive it and return the parts to O'Reilly. All right, Dooley is back on the road again. I am currently going to uh, take the rotors back. Rotors, I still said it again. The calipers and caliper frames back. That's a hundred dollar core on those. So I definitely want that money back on those. So we have money to spend other places on this truck. Uh, all the parts may be gone, but this project is far from done. I do have some other stuff on its way. Um, I tell you what, there's a big difference in driving this than there is the uh, the old second gen as far as power wise. Um, the only performance things I have actually done to this yet is the uh, is the cold air not yeah the cold air intake and the intake horn. So that is all that's done, but uh, that is just about to change. Uh, hopefully for too long. Uh, waiting on uh, some parts to come in, and uh, we're going to be doing some performance stuff here pretty soon. So uh, other than that, I think um, I'm actually going to drive this to work tomorrow too. So anyway, guys. I hope that you are enjoying the channel thus far and the builds I have going on. If you don't mind, hit that like button, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not already done so, and we'll talk to you guys later on. Bye-bye.